What is up you guys, I'm Charmix, today I'm going to be reacting to Game Theory, why YouTube will never fix Rewind, uh, YouTube Rewind 2019 by the Game Theorist. Now, I, I personally, I don't know, I think they've tried to fix YouTube Rewind this year, I think they tried better, they definitely tried better compared to last year. I think that, like, I, I heard someone explain this and it makes a lot of sense to me, YouTube was using Rewind as a way to advertise, like, uh, creators to advertisers to try to get advertisers to come to the platform. Something like that. And YouTube doesn't really want to show all the crazy uh, negative YouTubers, the edgy ones, because they'll think, they'll think that advertisers don't want to come to the platform because of them. But um, since people don't want to see these family-friendly creators who aren't really big anymore and who have left the platform for the most part, and YouTube doesn't want to use the non-friendly advertisers, and it makes sense that they don't actually want to put the amount of time and effort into doing a rewind anymore as they have in the past because... You know, they don't want to use the people we want to see, if that makes sense. Anyway, this is by The Game Theorist. I freaking love The Game Theorist. Make sure you guys go subscribe to The Game Theorist. Without any further ado, let's begin. I wonder what they should do at this point. Like, what can YouTube do to have a successful rewind? Well, sit down, Felix. Let's talk about that. <laughs> Actually, you're already sitting down, so... Let's oh, I like that haircut, Matt. It looks good. Was that from the live stream? You had to cut your hair or something like that? So I guess this is a new haircut as a result. It looks really good. Maybe this is a new style you can keep. Let's just move on, shall we? Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, where we always talk about everything two weeks after it's relevant because the show is so darn hard to produce. Seriously, no matter how many- Yeah, the editing in, in these shows is insane. The New Year's resolutions I make in the last eight years of doing this show, I've never been able to get, like, more than a week ahead. So today, I really want to talk about the YouTube Rewind. The last time that I talked about Rewind was back in 2015. Really? That long ago? Wow. Way back then, in that theory, I predicted that 2015's YouTube Rewind would be the final good one. I think you probably nailed that, actually. I think 2015 was an alright Rewind. I don't, I don't remember it exactly, but uh, I know the last couple years haven't been so good. And, okay, I wasn't that far off. I mean Oh, 2016 was a good one too? Okay, that's good. I don't remember it really. Missed it by like a year, right? At this point, we all know the story. 2016's was good, not great. Okay, that's the like ratio. Yeah, it's still, it's still good. 2017 started the massive decline, and then 2018... Well, let's just cut to footage of 2018, shall we? Oh, that's hot. That's hot. 2018 did have the highlights, like the friggin' Will Smith meme, I love that meme, it's so stupid that- Yeah, I love that meme. So there- although it was a dumpster fire, there were some good things that come out of it. The memes, basically, were the only good things that come out of it. Not indeed YouTube and TikTok sensation Will Smith, it was a literal garbage fire. And so this year, they just kinda gave up, threw up their hands and said, you know what, we don't know what you like, so here's a bunch of videos that objectively got a lot of likes instead. Minus, of course, the ones that didn't fit into the arbitrary rules that we listed out on our website. At this point, Rewind appears to have an unfixable problem. PewDiePie himself was called in to review this year's Rewind, and even he couldn't fix the darn thing. I actually got to see it. Yeah, I heard PewDiePie and H3H3 Productions were actually notified, and they, they got the chance to watch this before. And they both said that people would probably like it. And it's true that people liked it more than the previous year's Rewind, but at the same time, like, the like ratio is still really bad. And I, it's because people want, like, the 2015 type of Rewind, the way it's edited and everything. But they want it with people who are more edgy, and they want it covering topics that YouTube doesn't necessarily want to cover, like the boxing stuff, uh, the, the, the drama. YouTube doesn't want to cover that, but that's what people want to see. And I got to give feedback on it, and they took some of my feedback, but it's still bombed. <laughs> you were the chosen one! Honestly, there probably wasn't a whole lot that he was in a position to do, but still, the point is there. Overall, the reaction to the Watch Mojo list that was YouTube Rewind 2019 was, well, best described as not as negative as 2018, but outside of that, the creator community didn't have a whole lot to say about it. And I mean that literally. When reacting to it, that was just everyone's general response. Oh, that's it? That's it? Oh, that's how they end it. Okay. Oh, okay. It's like a bowl of rice. Not bad. It's a little plain. That's probably the greatest analogy I've ever heard. 
And it's fine, I guess, but it's so boring. But you know what? It's very accurate. It's very accurate. I think that there's actually a lot to unpack from this year's Rewind that's largely gone ignored in favor of people arguing over whether there was either too much or too little K-pop in it. Because when you stop and analyze this year's Rewind, we get ourselves a preview of what the next 10 years on this platform are going to look like. And let me tell you, it's going to be a very different looking platform. No kidding. The last couple of years, you get, there's been so many changes. I think 2015 was probably the last good year um, for creators, just in terms of uh, the leniency on this site and how it was kind of like the Wild West. And I freaking miss that those days. I mean, sure, there are positives nowadays. Things have gotten better. There have been a lot of positive changes, I think. But there's been so many more negative that I think it really outweighs the positive. Like, just for positives, uh, YouTube has made uh, copyright claims and everything a little bit easier to deal with. You can now just click a button, it'll edit out the segment or whatever. It's been so much easier to deal with stuff like that. YouTube has definitely changed in ways for better. But I think, you know, behind the scenes or whatever, um, just in terms of the policies and everything, it's definitely getting more strict. And now the uh, the FTC is getting their hands on YouTube, so there's more regulation. It's better in some ways, but a lot worse in others. First, let me get something personal off my chest. I recently posted a full interview I did with YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki, where the very first question I asked her was about YouTube gamers being treated as second-class citizens. Her response was that we're not. My answer would be no. I mean, gaming is an incredibly important part of our ecosystem. It's why I'm here. It's why we're having a gaming summit. Okay, fair enough. But then, less than a week after I post that video, I see this year's Rewind, which features lists of the year's top individual musicians, individual dance creators, individual beauty creators, and then this. Or it didn't actually do the the gamers. It did the. Uh, I don't. I don't like the word gamer. I really don't like the word gamer. Even though I am a gamer, every time I say it, it, it just sounds like it's like I'm memeing. Anyway, I understand what Matt's getting at. It didn't feature gamers. It just featured the games that people were playing. A list of games, not the gamers who play yeah, those games, create with those games, help those games grow and sustain popularity. The creators who are some of the platform's most well-known and successful personalities. No, it's a prime example of the problem that I leveled at Susan in that interview. Gamers as second class. You don't see beauty gurus being boiled down to the list of the top palettes that were talked about. This <laughs> That'd be funny if it was. This year, we're not presented with the lists of the top. So wait, did I just say pig meat? Is that an actual? Okay, you know what, whatever. Music genres on the platform this year, but rather the top musicians. And yet gamers are only as good as the games that they play. Not even worth being mentioned by name. And that's not being salty on my own behalf. Far from it. There is no chance that I would ever be mentioned on a list of like, top liked creators on the platform. We're not that well liked. I just think. What do you mean you're not that well liked? I think you are. This video's like ratio is 99% uh, likes. I mean, that's or over 99%. That's a really good like. And it's got over 100,000 likes. That's a lot of people who like this. Now, maybe out of the top 10 liked, maybe not. Because there are YouTubers who are larger who would get more likes. But uh, yeah, I think you're quite well liked. That it's more like than I am. Indicative of the way that this platform continually treats creators who communicate through the medium of games differently from those who communicate through other mediums, like vlogs or makeup or music and dance. It's just, it's inequality and you don't notice it unless you're looking for it. And why does that exist though? I don't understand why that exists. I guess as a gamer or as someone who plays video games and who like watches video game let's plays, I don't understand why that's a thing that they're doing. It's there. That's sad. And I wish it would change. Because gamers are pretty awesome. And we do a lot for this platform. But okay, that was just a minor nitpick. I now want to talk about the big picture stuff, right? Let's start- Yeah, I think out of all, gamers on YouTube have raised the most money. I really think that. Like, out of all the charity let live streams and whatnot, I think gamers have raised the most. Like, you don't see beauty gurus going around raising money for charities or whatnot. I think it has to be, like, gamers who raise the most, like Markiplier, PewDiePie, Jacksepticeye, but, like, I think gamers are the most charitable community on YouTube. ...by attempting to fix the impossible problem that is the YouTube Rewind. And a big problem requires itself a big screen, so if you'll excuse me, I gotta get off the couch for this one. We're headed to green screen land, my friends. YouTube, you 
say at the beginning of this thing that you don't know what we like, right? That it's so hard to figure out, but the thing is, it's not, it's not hard. I'm an idiot and if I could figure it out, then there's something definitely wrong with people who can't. <laughs> or they just don't want to admit what people like. It's probably the second one. They probably just don't want to admit that the site has a lot of edgy creators and people like edgy content. You managed to do it for five years before this fairly successfully, so it must be able to be done. And for all the talk around how big the platform has gotten and how many creators there are and how global it is and how impossible it is to satisfy everyone in a single video, honestly, I think that's just making a lot of excuses. That's not getting to the core problems that made 2017 and 2018 so disliked. When you look at those two Rewinds relative to all the others, it becomes clear that Rewind's problems all boil down to two core issues. I'm gonna guess them. One, uh, the creators featured aren't necessarily the creators people want to see, and the creators featured are more or less as relevant as they used to be. I've noticed that kind of being a trend where you have people who, you know, five years ago they were massive, but nowadays they aren't really, um, they don't, they, now they are, they aren't really that popping, shall we say. I've noticed that. And I think the second thing is that they just aren't showing the, the big events that happened in the year. The first one is dishonesty. The thing is, we first and foremost want YouTube Rewind to be what it promises it is. To be a rewind of the previous year. I'm sorry, but that's the brand that you created and now you're stuck with it. And believe me, I feel your pain. I do theories for a living and theories are hard to write, especially one a week. But if I suddenly do something that isn't a well-researched, fully scripted out, thoughtful essay and call it a game theory, well, guess what? People get mad at me. And rightfully so, to be honest. Same with a rewind that doesn't actually rewind the events of the year. When multiple Yeah, it's a, that, that's what I'm saying. You know, the people people want to see the stuff that happened in the year, and YouTube doesn't want to show that because it's a lot of drama and uh, negativity. Months feel of, I don't know, a worldwide movement supporting an independent creator racing to cross the 100 million subscriber mark before a large corporate channel. That's something that I think you should probably cover. When a massive battle between two rival beauty gurus spills out into the mainstream media and sets records for unsubscribes in a day, spawning live stream counter trends that follow the drama outright prompting you to change your platform, well, that's probably something that you're gonna wanna cover. Yeah, like, it's not that hard to, um, cover all these things. Like, it's just that it's, it's all drama and YouTube doesn't want the drama, right? When a Logan Paul versus KSI boxing match is one of the biggest pay-per-view events on your platform, that's something that you're going to want to cover. Now, don't get me wrong. I know you want to put on a good face for your advertisers, that you're ashamed of some of the more controversial... Yeah, it's all drama. ...versial or edgier stories on your platform, but YouTube was a platform that won the media wars by being first and foremost a source for authentic content. Authentic doesn't mean perfection. And if you really do want to do a rewind, like you say you do every year, you have to take the good with the bad. You have to honor both sides of this thing. Now, real talk, I understand why you'd be scared to slip into your platform's edgier stories, but just because something might have negative connotations back when it happened, doesn't mean it still has to be negative when it appears in a YouTube rewind setting. Yeah, and also you don't have to show your advertisers it. Don't use it as an advertisement. What did you do to his face, Matt? Take the three examples that I just brought up, right? The Tati versus James Charles drama, T-Series versus PewDiePie, Logan Paul versus KSI Boxing. Three huge stories that any yearly recap should absolutely have included. Yeah. Three stories that you might be sensitive to. I mean, I would assume that you were since they didn't really appear in their respective yearly recap. But consider this, set up a giant boxing match. Three rounds, each round comedically riffing on one of these respective battles. Or, you know what, if you don't like the boxing metaphor, use another YouTuber trend example. Mis oh yeah, that would be creative if they did that. Mr. Beast's YouTuber paintball challenge, with each duo who were fighting at a certain point now being recast as a team. It keeps things fun, lighthearted, and group thematically, while also- Yeah, legit, this is why I say that they gotta outsource to like, people in the meme community or people like Matt Pat, just people who are creative. <laughs> because if you don't know what people want, go to people who do know what people want. 
also, and most importantly, not sweeping those events under the rug. Massive trends that happened on a global scale that everyone who lives and breathes YouTube expects to see here because it was such a massive cultural event for this platform. Because when you ignore stuff like that, that is when people get mad at you. That's when they hit the dislike button. That is when it starts to feel dishonest, which is like the antithesis of why people love this platform in the first place. Second major problem, don't virtue signal, or at least don't tell us that you're doing it. What do we do? It's the yeah, that, that, oh my, last year's was really bad. <laughs> Classic adage of showing, not telling. Early rewinds didn't have kumbaya circles of creators saying how proud they are of this community. No, instead, that message, that same message, was communicated through the imagery of the rewind. A rainbow backdrop, riffing on the Love Has No Labels viral video, featuring creators of different backgrounds without feeling the need to explicitly call it out. This is, and has all- I think Matt's nailing it right now. I really hope the people behind Rewind at YouTube watch this and kind of learn from uh, their their mistakes and try to make... Okay, I don't want next year's to be like this year's. I want next year's to be like the 2013, 2014 one where it, people really like them. But I have a feeling that next year's is going to be like this year's. And uh, yeah, I think that'll probably be basically the death of the Rewind we all uh, love. Or used to love. Always been an inclusive platform of diversity, but calling it out as explicitly as you did in those last two rewinds is not only cringy, but it's self-aggrandizing. It feels gross and self-serving. It takes a beautiful thing that happened organically on this platform and suddenly feels like it's being used to pat a corporation on the back. So again, you say that you don't know what we like. Well, clearly audiences of YouTube like a pretty diverse selection of things, but I can tell you two things that we seem to universally not like dishonesty and preachiness. But you know what? This whole conversation's pointless. You know it, I know it. It's time everyone at home watching knows it because- Yeah, I think it is. I mean, he, Matt's nailing it, but I think it is pointless because I don't think, I don't think things are gonna go back to the way they used to as much as we, you know, we might like or might want things to go back. I don't think they will. I've read between the lines of your 2019 Rewind. I see where your head's at, YouTube. I get that none of this matters and that the Rewind is now and forever gone and it ain't coming back and you ain't interested in fixing it. So all these conversations are just moot points. But in order to fully have that conversation, we need to sit back down on the couch. Another transition. You see, 2018 was the last year that YouTube attended is the couch and the green screen just like right across from each other or something? To put together a rewind that actually felt like a human made it rather than YouTube's own AI systems. Like, for all we know, an AI could have actually edited this thing together because good- No, no, it couldn't have. It couldn't have. I've seen AI editing. I actually watched a, a YouTuber who developed an AI editor where they'll take clips that you put in. Like if you grab some clips, you put it in and it'll edit it all together. And, uh, yeah, it's not... No. It ain't it, Chief. This is definitely human edited. Goodness knows a human cannot watch this. There's so many awkward jump cuts. Like, why would you put a cut there? You put the cuts on the beats and the music, guy. Oh, maybe that is true. Maybe the person who edited just didn't care. It's very possible. Guys, 2019's Rewind had more glitch effects than a Five Nights at Freddy's theory. But <laughs> the aesthetics of the whole thing aside, what I actually mean by that is that this year, YouTube gave up pretending to be something that it's not. A person. A person has a perspective. A person makes judgment calls about what's relevant, what's cool, and what isn't. This year, YouTube started doing what it does best. Being a machine that can read numbers. You didn't like what you got last year? Fair enough. We'll stop deciding what we think you'll like and let the numbers choose for us. Beep. But they didn't even do that because PewDiePie had, I think it was like two other videos that should have been on Rewind because of the likes that uh, they had. They should have been on Rewind, but uh, they were snubbed off it because of uh, it being PewDiePie. Boop, boop, beep, boop. Just like our algorithms. Boop, boop, beep, boop. And over. Throughout 2019, YouTube has boop, boop, had to boop, assert boop. that it is nothing except a platform, a flat surface where people build things. YouTube is no longer a part of the YouTube community. 
It used to be. That was the heyday of the YouTube Rewind. But it's not anymore. It's not a person. It's a platform. And this is just the latest in a whole slew of reactions that YouTube has had recently. Back in 2018, we experienced the adpocalypse. Advertisers comp- Correction, 2017, it came into play. And I remember the exact day I got hit complained about their ads running against content that they didn't deem as brand safe, and so YouTube was forced to react by changing ad policies. And along the way, their response to advertisers was, we're just the platform. People can post anything here. We're just a machine, so you can't expect everything to be perfectly brand safe all the time. Fast forward to article 13 slash 17 when it was being passed around Europe. YouTube was again forced to react by working with countries. Yeah, what's going on with that? What is going on with Article 13? Doesn't that come into play 2020 or is that 2022 it comes into play? I, I don't know. I haven't heard anything about it in a long time. I actually forget, like, everything about it. I don't know. ...to set up copyright policies, but along the way, they maintain what's called a safe harbor position. Basically a stance that says, hey, we're just the platform. We're not responsible. All right, I gotta, I'm gonna, I gotta pee my pants if I don't go. Anyway, I'm back. Uh, I was gonna say, you know, I think Matt's really correct here. YouTube has changed, and, you know, the catalyst towards what made them change was the adpocalypse, I believe. And although creators don't necessarily like the change, I think at the same time, if they didn't change, then, you know, the, the amount of money people would be making would be a lot less, because a lot less creators, or not creators, a lot less advertisers would be on the platform, I think. Or at least that is a possibility. So, although I don't like the change that has happened, I can understand the reason towards why YouTube did the change, or has changed, if that makes sense. Well, for the content that gets uploaded here, if people upload copyrighted material, well, that's not really our problem. We shouldn't be held accountable. We're just the platform. Earlier this year, when the FTC came a-knocking about COPPA, complaining that there was kids' content running ads on the platform, again, YouTube was forced to react by changing kids' content policies, but also reacting to us in the creator community by not offering advice, by not being able to help us in any way, just direct us to the guidelines, because you know what? If they were the help, they stepped beyond the lines of being just the platform. Yeah, then they become, uh, then they become, like, liable, I guess. They are neutral. So YouTube's 2019 Rewind happens to be the perfect distillation of where YouTube is in 2019. A new- Like, it wouldn't be hard, even if they were to do the Rewind like they did this year. But just include the stuff, you know, have a section of top 10 massive events that happened. And then, and just included the, the drama and whatnot. That doesn't all of a sudden make them more than just a platform. That is telling people on the platform what happened as of the massive events. You know, they could have a top 10 list of that too. Like that wouldn't automatically mean that they're more than a platform. They'd still just be a platform, but just telling people, oh, these are the massive events that happened on the platform. They can still do that. Even if, even if we don't go back to the 2013, 2015 version of Rewind, even if next year's was like this year's, but they at least included the events that happen, I think a lot more people would be happy and okay with it, you know? It's the fact that they didn't include the things that happened that people are angry with. Neutral observer of what happens on the platform, completely disconnected from those things for its own self-preservation. Things that happen here. The Rewind is just the latest in a long series of two years worth of YouTube saying, we're just the platform, we don't speak for the creators on that platform. Instead of trying to interpret the culture that exists here, the YouTube Rewind in 2019 shows that YouTube is a- Okay, total side note. This this one, she's eating the friggin' shoe. Is that fake? That it looks like a fake shoe. Yeah, that's a fake shoe. What is that, a donut? And this looks like she's been eating too, whatever this is. She's been eating this as well. Essentially washing its hands of the culture that exists here. No judgment calls, no deciding who's cool. Yeah, they don't have to judge uh, the events that happened in the year. Just put it in the top 10 list next year. You know, have a top 10 events that happened. Something like that, where they can then say, this is what happened in the year as well. We aren't judging, this is just what happened. You know, they can do that. They don't have to step past being a platform to do that. Cool, and who should have 10 frames or who should be driving the YouTube battle bus? Just an auto-generated mirror held back up to us. This is numerically what you told the platform that you like. Data in, data out. YouTube is the platform they play by the numbers. They're not here to get involved with us. Say what you will about YouTube Rewind 2018. It was bad, it was cringy, it was preachy, it didn't represent the platform. But guess what it did do? It got people to care. It has 20 million likes and dislikes. 
most of them dislikes and over two I was gonna say 20 million likes where are you seeing those numbers I think uh, you mean in total I get a million it. comments this year's half that wait a minute what who is this you see this isn't this a YouTube poop creator I think I know this creator this this um this profile picture I think belongs to a YouTube creator by the name of hey, let me do let me see go see if I can find it okay I don't know I can't find it but I I know I, I I know this picture I think this is a YouTube poop creator does that mean one of the editors for Matt is a YouTube poop creator total side note towards the video but that just that's kind of surprised me this year's half that 10 million with only a million comments almost exactly half any way you slice it the response was lukewarm at best and that's the problem with being neutral you lose all that passion that fervor the excitement about what's going on there you lose the enthusiasm for being here as a part of the community but the thing is at least from where i'm sitting the old rewinds are never coming back YouTube still has a community, a culture, right? We know this. Yeah, I don't know if the old rewinds will come back, but I'm saying even if they continue on with this new type of rewind, even if they just add the events that happened in the year as part of it in some place of it, I don't think that's making themselves more than just a platform. That's just showing what happened. I think they could do that and still be okay. Because if I say T-Series versus PewDiePie, pretty much everyone who watches this platform recognizes that, right? But YouTube itself is from this point forward, opting out of its own community and i gotta say it it feels kind of sad right feels like a bit of a loss a changing era a tech company that is moving on from its first and hardest core users which means <coughs> yeah it is sad that they're doing that but uh i, I don't know what are you gonna do what are you gonna means do that i guess now it's up to us to pick up that torch and run with it. Creators like the ones that you see cycling through on screen right now, the people who are working to create the real rewind, one that we feel really recaps the year in the way that we- I think PewDiePie should be the one who, who does it. Like there's so many people who are doing it right, have their own version of rewind, which I think is good, but I think the official person to do it should be PewDiePie. And I think other people should contribute to his rewind where uh, they send in clips and he, they, he'll just include it kind of like a collab. I think that's what Rewind should be in the future. You wanna see, because we are still a part of this community. We still believe that there's a culture here and we're not ashamed of it and we're excited to be a part of it. Sad that YouTube doesn't feel the same way, but hey, that's just a theory, a Rewind theory. Thanks for watching. I think this is a good video, and I think Matt nailed the the points towards why uh, YouTube will rewind will never be fixed. And it's sad to um to see it, it go this way. And I hope that in next year's rewind, if they do a rewind, that they uh, even if they do a top ten list, I hope that they fix the gaming problem that was in there. You know, not representing the actual gamers. And I also hope that they show at least the top 10 events that happened within the year. And I think a lot more people would be happy with it because that, that's that's what Rewind's supposed to be. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up if you're new. Hit subscribe and show the family. I think I'd rate this Game Theory video. Out of a 10, I'd probably rate it like uh, an 8. I, I really liked it a lot. And uh, yeah, make sure you guys go subscribe to the Game Theorist. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Boop.